Well, hello. It's good to see you again as we begin this 22nd lesson in the book of Revelation. I have really been challenged to pray and to ask for God's wisdom about teaching you the right things. And I, I thank God for His Holy Spirit's help for me and for you as well as we try here together to understand this book of the Bible. I think back to that first chapter again. And I think of verse 3 that said, Blessed is the person, he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. I want to keep those words. I want to obey these words, but I want to understand these words the best that I can. And I'm pray praying that you will be able to understand as well, and that God will help me to teach and explain clearly the things that he wants us to know from this book of Revelation. Well, let's begin with prayer, and then we'll go and see what God has for us this week here. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause here before we even begin. We are like deer that are thirsty for the water. We want to understand and know these things in this book. It's precious to us. We thank you for giving us a book that explains what will happen in the future. And God, as we're here today and we're studying, we understand that these things are happening now and they're very close to happening, we feel. Of course, Paul in the New Testament thought himself that he would see the rapture. We don't know when the rapture will come, but we know it will come because it's here in the book. We pray that you would help us today as we finish chapter 12, help us to really focus on the important things that are here. Of course, all things here are important, but there are things here, truths that you want for us to learn today, to help us today to be better followers of Jesus Christ. So help us today, we pray, uh, to understand clearly. Help me to sign clear, to voice clear, and to think clear. And I pray that you will use me. I'm asking you, already have asked you to fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. It's important. And Lord, don't stop with me. Fill the folks who are watching on the video today as well. Help them to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God as well. So that we can understand here and then help us to obey the things that we learn here. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's exciting to be a Christian. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so happy that I'm saved. I'm happy that I know God personally. He and I, I know Him. He is my Father. He's not a stranger. He is my Heavenly Father. The New Testament uses the word Abba. It's like today we would say, Daddy. That's the intimacy that I can have with God, and you can as well. Thank the Lord for that relationship. We are here in Revelation chapter 12. If you have not opened your Bible yet, good time to open it now to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to begin today in the middle of the chapter, and we'll finish this 12th chapter today. Uh, but I told you last week, Revelation chapter 12 is an interesting chapter. It's an important chapter in, for the rest of the book. I believe it marks the middle point of that seven-year tribulation time. I'll put again the judgments I've been showing you every week. You'll notice right in the middle of that week, there is three and a half years on this side, three and a half years on the other side right in the middle, marks the place that I think we're seeing right here in chapter 12. Um, we are introduced, or last week we were introduced to three different 
uh, personalities. First, we were introduced to the woman. We discussed last week, that is the nation of Israel. Second, we were introduced to a dragon. And that dragon, we know, is going to be identified here in the last part of this chapter. We'll talk about him again. And then third, we talked about the male child born to the woman. So the child of Israel is Jesus Christ, and he's already been caught up. We discussed that all last week, so I don't want to uh, review too much. But today we begin in verse 7. <clears throat> and God <clears throat> kind of allows John and us to get a peek into heaven of what will be happening at this time. I want to just begin with verse, we'll begin in verse 7 and verse, verse 8, and we'll go on. There's something that happens in verse 7 and 8, and it's fighting in heaven. It says in verse 7, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. We know that that dragon is the devil. And the dragon fought with his angels. If you remember last week, we saw that the, the devil, when he left heaven, he took with him, and we saw it in verse um, I'm sorry, we saw it in earlier in chapter 12 that he drew with him one-third of the stars, it says. We know they were identified as the angels fallen, or we would call today the demons who follow Satan. <clears throat> Those angels are with him. Dra drop down to verse 8. It says, and it's speaking about the, the dragon in verse 8, and prevailed not... Neither was their place found any more in heaven. This vision that we get to see here in verses 7 and 8 is a picture that was already discussed and explained in the Old Testament book of Daniel. I want you to go back to Daniel chapter 12, and I want you to see verse 1. It describes this same thing in Revelation chapter 12. So in Daniel chapter 12, I want you to see verse, see verse 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, was since, and there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time... Thy people shall be delivered, every one, every one, that shall be found written in the book. So this battle that we see is between Satan. Uh, review a little bit. God created three archangels, three, three angels that were above the other angels, the normal angels. Their names are given to us in the Bible. First is Michael. We see his name in, in Daniel and Revelation here already. Second is Gabriel. He was the, the angel that made the announcement to Mary that she was going to be pregnant with Jesus Christ. And third was Lucifer. That he became known now as the devil. So the battle that we see is a war between Satan and Michael, those two angels. And it says that, uh, that Michael will win and that Satan, the dragon, will not have the power to win or the authority to win. And Satan will be cast out of, of heaven. Uh, not only the believers in the Lord Jesus are being attacked on the earth during this time. Remember, there will be 144,000 Jewish witnesses that will go around and share the gospel. Uh, we've already been told that they will see people saved from every nation, all kindreds, and all languages. There'll be people who are saved. Remember, uh, 
two weeks ago, I believe, we saw the two witnesses who will come for three and a half years. That's that beginning three and a half years. They're going to testify and witness, and God is going to use them to share the gospel. So there will be people who are saved during the tribulation time, that seven-year time. Satan brings war against those believers who are here on the earth, but now the war has moved also to heaven. And uh, again, Satan will be defeated. If there's one thing about this chapter that I really am thankful for is we see God's power and authority over Satan himself. Satan today seems so powerful that there'll be no person that could defeat him, but the truth is God will win every time there's a battle with Satan. And here we see in verse 7 and 8 of Revelation chapter 12, that Satan is defeated in heaven as well. Now, the truth is that Satan was already defeated here on the earth. When did that happen? You say, Jim, when did that happen? I don't remember reading that here. We've seen it again and again and again already in the book of Revelation. I'll tell you, when Satan was, de was defeated, where? You're right, at the cross, and then at the empty tomb. Jesus Christ defeated Satan on the cross. When he died, he paid off our sin debt. Satan's hold on us of sin was now, now we have the opportunity for it to be removed. When Jesus Christ rose from the grave there, when he rose, remember, Remember the angel said, he's not here, he's risen, as he said. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he conquered the devil. And the chains of sin that had bound people all the way back to Adam and Eve, those chains were broken and Satan was defeated. So we see his defeat in, on the earth already with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And now we're going to see that he is kicked out of heaven as well. So what happens because of that? Look at verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. It says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. I'll talk about that title, that old serpent. Uh called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the result of the war in verses 7 and 8, the result, what? Satan is cast out. His angels cast out from heaven. They are cast to the earth. The dragon that is pictured here, it's also called in this verse, he's called the old serpent. What do you think that means? What do you think it means, the old serpent? I think you're right. I think it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Who deceived Eve? The serpent. Who was also who? The devil, right. And so we see that the devil has not changed his ways all the way through the history of man. He still is the deceiver. He's still lying and lying and lying. He still cannot tell the truth. Today, so many people we see around us have believed the lie of Satan, but he cannot tell the truth. He will always lie. Uh, I want to show you a verse from, from the New Testament. It's important for us to understand we are in a battle today with the devil and his forces. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says there, be sober, sober. You know, the, the opposite of drunk. Mm -hmm. Be sober, serious. Be vigilant. Vigilant. It means never keep looking everywhere, always looking. B 
Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary means enemy. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Wow. That is a picture of the devil we that is supposed to us. That is a picture. This verse is a picture of the real person of Satan. There are many people, false religions today, that want us to believe that Jesus Christ, ah, uh, not real. The devil, ah, uh, make believe. I want to tell you one of the things that I believe that the devil has done to deceive people is to put into their minds, oh, the devil really is a person that's red and he has a red uh, pitchfork that he's holding. He has a, a tail with a little point on And it's kind of like a cartoon. The, the devil wants people to think he's nice and he's friendly and he's not really bad and he's not real. First Peter chapter 5 tells us we have a real enemy. What should we do? We need to be sober. We should not be playing about this. We need to be vigilant. We need to be watching, watching, watching all the time. And we need to make sure we understand that we have an enemy who wants to devour, devour us. He wants to, he wants to destroy us. It's important that we know that. He will deceive the whole world. That's what the verse said in verse 9. He will, he will deceive the whole world. He's not interested in helping in any way. Remember, it was this serpent, the devil, who tricked and deceived Eve there in the garden. Same person, the devil, same. He's not changed anything. He is constantly deceiving people in the world today. It amazes me. It amazes me. I can't believe how people can see things today that they say, oh, it's okay to do that. Really, I think about how many babies have been taken from their mother's womb and killed healthy, good, smart, right babies killed. And we say, oh, that's okay. Mother's choice. How can we see that and not be upset and not, not become so filled with righteous anger that that's happening? Other things, people say, oh, that's okay. Let that go. It's all right. Listen, today, the world should not be who you depend on for right and wrong choices. We need to depend on this because the ruler of this world today is the devil, and he is a deceiver. He's not going to try to help any person. Now, listen, I want to tell you, as a Christian, understand this. Satan does not need to bother people without Christ. They're already going to hell. He will try to tempt and, and trip up and trick believers. And what's sad today is that there are many, many people that are going to church that Satan is pulling away little by little by little. I remember a person saying, um, if you want to cook a frog, a frog, I don't know why you want to cook a frog, but anyway, if you want, you don't boil the water, you know, have the bubbles popping up and throw the frog in. He'll jump out fast. You put the frog in just warm water. And then you turn up and turn up and turn up the fire underneath until he doesn't even know what's happening. The frog becomes comfortable. Maybe he sits back, he swims. And before he knows what's happening, the water is boiling and he is cooked. That's the way the devil is doing it today in many of our churches. We see churches who are changing. Oh, not big change, little change. But before they know what's happened, they've changed so much. Now, instead of being straight and following the Word of God and, and God in heaven, they've, they've got a little bit off here, and now they're way over here. That's the trick of the devil today. 
I'm going to put up another verse for you in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Jesus warned us. Jesus told us, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. What, what do wolves do with sheep? Are they friends with them? No, they only, a wolf only wants one thing from the sheep. He wants to destroy him. He wants to devour the sheep. And Jesus told us, be careful. Don't allow Satan and his wolves to come in. They'll dress like sheep. They'll look like you. They'll talk like you. They'll say, brother, sister, hey. But you have to watch because they're false and what happens, they will come in with you and fellowship with you, and then they will tell you little, little doubtful things to put in you. Really, is the pastor the, the authority? He was just the same, you know, and they, they plant doubts in your mind and your heart. And before you know what's happening, you've been deceived. You've been pulled away. Be careful. The devil is like that lion. He's just seeking he is looking for people he can devour. Don't let him get you. Be careful. So the result will be of the war that the devil and his angels will be cast out from heaven. Verses 10 and 10 through 12 are really like a song of victory that comes from heaven. I want you to see verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Whew, we have victory. The angels sing there. Praise God. The person who has accused the brethren Every day, every night, every night, every day, all day, all day, all day, all day. He has been cast out. He cannot do it anymore. That is, that is victory. You'll see the words salvation here, salvation and strength. Those are the words that we get our word dynamite from. I don't know if I spell, you know, dynamite it's the same idea it's it's power uh we get we have power and salvation through jesus christ it says his kingdom and his power his authority jesus will establish after the seven year tribulation time period jesus will establish his kingdom here on the earth for 1000 years it's going to be exciting the devil was cast out of heaven at this time in these verses, and he will not go back any time again, never. Uh, his, day, his day is finished. Let me tell you, the last half of the tribulation time, that the last three, three and a half years there, that last half we call the great tribulation, or Daniel told us it would be called the abomination of desolation. I'm put up here so you'll see the title. The abomination of desolation. Uh, that this is a time, and it's explained not only not only uh, by Daniel, but Jer Jeremiah also in chapter 30, verse 7 talked about it. Uh, Daniel talks about it many times. Matthew chapter 24, I'll, I'll show you a verse later that will show you the, the, the title there. Uh, this, will, this begins the abomination of desolation, the last three and a half years there of the tribulation time. This will be Satan's final attempt to block the plan of Jesus Christ to come back. Of course, he's not going to be successful, but he will try for those three and a half years. He will try. 
Look at verse 11, chapter 12, verse 11. It says, And they overcame him. How? How did the angels of heaven win against the devil? It says here, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ. Notice that the word Lamb, notice the capital L, not small, but capital, the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimonies, and they loved not their own lives unto the death. So there are two things that we see here that, that brought the victory. The first is the blood of the Lamb. Don't make a mistake. Jesus Christ's blood is powerful. It is that blood that was given there on the cross poured out for us to remove our sins, to remove them. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's blood is incredibly powerful. I'm thankful for that because I know Jesus Christ's blood washes my sins, not only my past, but my, my sins today and my sins tomorrow. It's a wonderful thing. And it says that those believers, the other thing that defeated the devil here is the testimony of the word of their testimony. You know it's important that you and I talk about Jesus Christ. It's important that you and I tell people what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's funny. I think it's wonderful, but funny too. This morning I was reading my Bible, and today is our time for our trash, our trash to be picked up outside our house. So last night I took out the barrels, put them out there. This morning I was reading my Bible. My wife came up to me and she said, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I want to give something for the men who pick up our trash out there. I said, okay. She said, I'm going to put in track. I want to give to witness to them. I said, okay. So I, I quick, I ran to the store. I bought some gift cards. You know, we put them in envelope, put them with a track to explain how to be saved. Why? Our testimony is important. Even to the trash men, it's important that you and I share what Jesus Christ has done for us. Because other people need to know about Jesus Christ. That testimony you give, maybe it's just handing out a tract. I read today in, in Silent Word newspaper, I read about a, a deaf man who has handed out over 1,000 gospel tracts to hearing people, given, given, given. It says in here that his church heard from over 100 people who were saved because of the man, the deaf man, and he's almost blind, giving out tracts to hearing people. And they were saying, it's possible. Our testimony is important and it's powerful. And I want to encourage you to give your testimony. Drop down to verse 12. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Do you see the end of verse 12 there? He knoweth he hath but a short time. The devil is kicked out of heaven. He comes down to the earth. And John writes, he says, the devil is now will become more more angry, more filled with wrath than before. Be careful on the earth and the seas. He's going to come and destroy and hate and all those things. It's going to be intensified. Why? Because the devil knows his time is short. His judgment is soon. And he knows he has very small time, really three and a half years time. That's all that's left him. Think about it. He has been deceiving and hurting and tempting and, and causing people to fall for about 7,000 years. And now he's down to three and a half years, all he has left. 
and he'll not be bashful. He's not going to hide. He's not going to be nice. He will not be friendly. He will come because he knows his time is running out. Probably, if you think about many churches today, the devil would not not even be interested in trying to cause them to go down. Why? Because they have become so weak. You know, people complain, oh, you you Christians think you're the only people with the right answer. Why are you so stuck? Why are you so strict? Why are you so stubborn about the Bible? We understand this book changes lives. We understand that the clear teaching and preaching from this book mixed with the Holy Spirit's power brings a transformed or opportunity for a transformed life. When a church begins to follow the world and wants to dress like the world and copy the world and a church begins to allow uh, lies to creep in just little things, changing little things, the power of the Word of God decreases. It, you know, it, it bothers me. I remember when I was a boy, and, and I know I'm old now, but when I was a boy, I can remember going to church for two weeks, every night for two weeks for revival meetings. That is almost impossible today. If you announced in a church, we're going to have revival meetings for two weeks, every night, people, you would hear people in the church, I can't do that. I have soccer schedule. My, my kids are playing baseball. I have to go to a party. I, excuse after excuse. What's happened to our churches? Where before we had the fire of God, now it's, it's dwindled. And it scares me. It's something that we need to be careful. By the way, I cannot change my church, but I can change me. I want God to have close touch to my heart. I want God to be able to change me quickly. I want to re remain faithful to God all the way through. I hope you want the same with me. Well, that brings us to the last part of, well, I'm sorry, the third part is the persecution. We can see it in verse 13. The warning came in verse 12 that Satan was going to come with great wrath because he knows his time is short. Verse 13 says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman. Remember last week we talked about that woman represents Israel. He persecuted the woman or Israel, which brought forth the man child. So Satan will intensify his efforts to hurt and destroy Israel at this time. The la if you remember, in the beginning of the tribulation time, the beginning of the seven years, the first rider on the horse came and offered fake peace. He offered that peace to Israel and the rest of the world. But now, in the middle, the three and a half year time, he's not going to offer peace. He's going to come and he's going to attack the woman or Israel with the idea of wiping out Israel. But I want you to see what happens. Verses 14 through the end of the chapter, 14 through 17. And we'll go verse by verse by verse a little bit. In verse 14 it says, To the woman, or remember that's Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. And the face of the, serp the serpent, so she will be able to hide from the serpent. From, she'll be able to hide from the devil. And God's going to take care of her for time and time and time and a half. So when you see the picture here of the great wings of the eagle, that's a picture of power. It's a, it's a picture of God's provision. Uh, I love the eagle. It's a magnificent uh, bird, powerful. 
uh, able to fly so high, higher than the other birds. And it's a picture of God's protection for us, for Israel here. Uh, you'll see that, again, I want you to see this is the time of the abomination of desolation. Remember that phrase that I told you before. It's at this time that this is going to happen. Israel will flee. The devil is going to try to destroy. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, Jesus said this, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So Jesus is saying, there'll be a place, a holy place that I will hide you. Stand in that place for protection. That brings us to verse 15. And I'm going to read verse 15, 16, and 17, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about them and we'll be finished for the day. Verse 15 says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause, that, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Verse 16, And the earth helped the woman. I love that phrase. The earth helped the woman. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So the dragon, and we know, again, that's the devil. The devil will cause a flood. Now, it could be physical. It could be spiritual. It could, you know, it could be many things. But here it says a flood. So we, we imagine it's real water. And it's, the water's coming. It's going to... He wants it to swallow up Israel. But God will allow the earth to help Israel. And it says here that, that the earth will open up and the water will just go down in. I, I, I cannot help but think about the Red Sea and how there Israel stood with the Red Sea here impossible to cross over, they thought behind the Egyptian soldiers chasing, wanting to kill them. And God just said, oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, Red Sea, open. And it did. And then later it closed and killed those soldiers. Do you remember the story? Reminds me of that here. And then verse 17, the last verse says, and the, dra the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Understand now, Satan's power will be pushed out against Israel and the Jew. He will try to destroy them from, from the earth. God is going to provide a way for that to be blocked for protection for Israel. Remember this, Satan could not stop or block Jesus Christ. So he will try to get the people who are following Jesus Christ destroyed. This remnant, it just means a small group. This small group, the remnant, is, is small, but they're still obeying God's commandments. Now, I would not say that this is only the Jews. I believe this group will be the people who are following, who have been saved during the tribulation time. So it's not only the Jews, but that's the picture that we were given with the woman, Israel. I believe that when uh, those 144,000 witnesses spread out around the world, here in the tribulation time, they will see Jews and Gentiles, people from all nationalities will be saved. And so those are the people that are spoken of here in chapter 12 that he will come against. But this small group of believers will remain faithful to, look at the last two words in the verse, they will remain faithful to who? 
night to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus Christ will never leave or forsake these people either. He's going to be faithful to them. Uh, Jesus Christ will take care of these people. And I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ will take care of you too. Jesus Christ is our great Savior. Trust Him today. Don't doubt. Don't fear. We don't need to fear. We have Jesus Christ with us. The Holy Spirit of God lives and fills us. We need to thank God for that today. Well, we're going to finish there. Next week we begin and we'll study the the beast. If you remember, we gave him the sign name last week the, because he's the devil, the beast, next week. Well, let's pray and we'll, we'll close for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the victory that we see here. Really, every page of the Bible is a victory story for believers. But there are many people who have not yet trusted Jesus Christ, have not accepted Jesus' payment payment on the cross for their own sin. I pray if there's a person here today that's watching that's not saved, I pray that you would help them to understand that they are a sinner, that their sin separates them from a holy, righteous, perfect God, that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died for them. He was buried. And fourth, I pray that they would call on His name and say, I believe you died for me were buried for me to pay off my sin debt, and now you have risen for me. And I will trust Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for my payment for sin. I pray that that would happen today. Thank you, Lord, for the victory we see here. Help us not to walk in fear, but to walk in confidence knowing you are our God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If, while I was praying, you said, I, I'm not sure if I die, I'm going to heaven, and you prayed with me through those four things, let me know that, would you? I will rejoice. I will rejoice with you. Well, thank you for watching this week, and I will see you next week.